All right, we are recording. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute you guys, uh, and then I'll get started. So, muting, muting. If you have a question, just uh, send it to the chat, and I'll, I'll answer it at the end or something. Cool. OK. Uh, so floor tom tuning. Um, we've gone over snare drum and bass drum so far. Um, Snare drum was pretty elaborate. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot coming together to make that sound. Bass drum was relatively simple, um, which was kind of nice. And this is kind of another one that is relatively simple for me. Um, I tend to tune my floor tom pretty low, um, so that means that there's not a whole lot of uh, not a whole lot of tightening going on as far as what I'm doing. Um, but the the same principle that applies to all of the drums is kind of the same one I use here. So um, I still go a little bit tighter on the bottom head, a little bit higher in the pitch on the bottom head. And um, the floor tom, I'll actually go pretty loose on the, the batter head, the head we're hitting. Um, this is because I like that low, grumbly, um, rock floor tom sound. If you ever listen to like, um, like Metallica or like, um, Megadeth or any kind of those thrash bands, like they do like very low tune floor toms. Um, that's kind of what I go for. Um, also, if you listen to any like modern rock band, like uh, Bad Flower or Beartooth or uh, what's another good one, um, like Breaking Benjamin or any modern rock band, floor tom is tuned relatively or very low. Um, in all of those mixes and on all of those drum sets. Um, this is because it sounds really good, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's why it's so popular, because it just sounds really awesome. If you listen to jazz, uh, you'll notice um, a little bit higher of a tuning on everything, um, and that includes the floor tom and the bass drum. Um, so this is definitely not like a good jazz bass drum, or jazz floor tom tuning. Those tunings are going to be um, a little bit higher in the register. And also they tend to use um, smaller drums anyways. This floor tom, in fact, is uh, sort of pretty close to the size of your average jazz bass drum. Uh, it's 16 by 16. Most jazz bass drums are either 16 or 18 inches in diameter. So this is actually pretty close to what a jazz bass drum would be. Um, but I'm not going to tune it. Uh, like a jazz bass drum or a jazz floor tom. This is strictly rock, uh, R&B, pop, gospel tune. It's very low, um, very bassy and full and meaty. That's what they're going for. So let's start with the bottom head today. Uh -huh. This is the, the head that produces the, uh, the resonance, controls how much ringing, controls what pitch the drum rings out at. Throw that on there. Remember, always matching up the logo of the drum head. Always matching that up with the company badge on the drum. You can see the Gretsch badge there. Always matching that up. It just looks nice. Slot that on there. Grab your, oops, all your tension rods. Throw that on there. And then just the usual finger tightening. Pretty tedious process as you as you all already know, but it's part of it, so I'm showing it. Let's see. Um, floor tom is unique in the sense that it's much taller than all of the other toms. Um, this drum is 16 by 16, so that's 16 inches wide, 16 inches tall. Um, something you'll notice about the higher toms, the smaller toms, I guess you could say, um, is that they are much shallower relatively. So you know, this is 16 by 16. A lot of the toms are wider than they are tall. So my other tom is 12 by 8. I have another one that's 10 by 7. 
So not nearly like, you know, they're not 12 by 12 and, and 10 by 10. You know, this, this drum is uh, proportionally longer and more cylindrical, if you will, you know, like a cylinder, um, like a Pringles can. Uh, so you get a little bit of a different uh, kind of, uh, a little bit different of a resonance than you would. Um, you get a little bit more resonance because the drum is bigger and the, the drum is uh, longer. So, you know, it takes, so there's more air moving around inside the drum and it takes more time for the hit to travel to the bottom head. Um, which, you know, with more air moving around and with that happening, um, you get sort of a different sound than you would with a shallower, smaller, higher tuned drum. You're going to get uh, more resonance um, and more volume as well. Get these all tightened up here. Once again, kind of a tedious process. Just in the drum key. All right, looks like we're uh, pretty well tightened here. So I'm going to go around um, and I am going to tighten until it fights back. So I'm, once again, watch my hand. I'm spinning. It's fighting back. That's my starting point right there. I'm going to go ahead and do on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and try just starting with a little half turn, a little 180 right there. And then I'm gonna go across. And I'm gonna spin, 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 spin until it bites back. I can feel it. And then I'm gonna go double check my spot. Eh, fighting back about right there. 180, boom. And then I'm gonna go over, skip a lug, spin. This one's a little less, uh, a little more, this one's grabbing a little harder as far as the threads go. You gotta kind of be careful about where to start at. There we go, right about there. Going to start to actually fight back. 180, across. Tightening the head down evenly, not harming the bearing edge, not harming the hoop, and not harming the head. Boom, grabs back. 180, and then this is where I can go one over. You gotta hit the other four. This is an eight lug drum. Fights back, 180. Fights back, 180. Fighting back, 180. And fighting back, 180. Boom. That's a good starting point on a floor tom, in my opinion. Let's see where we're at. That's honestly right about where I'm usually going to have it at. I don't do, I, I kind of treat this guy like, the, like a bass drum in a lot of ways. Um, you know, not, not too much to do in my opinion. Uh, so let's go ahead and go around. Just make sure we're, we're relatively even as far as the pitches go. Low. So these four, so these four right here, this whole band I have found is a relatively lower than these four here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do tightening, a little bit of a tightening of all four of those. You gotta remember, when you tighten one of them, it raises the pitch of all of them. So you have to be aware of, of you know, you have to take it incrementally and make sure you're not doing too much because that's going to raise everything else. So you've got to make sure you're very gradual about it. Because when I raised this one, it brought the pitch of this one up, actually. So this one's still a little low. I'm not going to bring it all the way because I know that when I bring these up, it's also going to raise this one as well. So i got to leave it a little low still. This one's only slightly low. I'm gonna give that a little low, but I think we're good. Slightly low here, little low. This one's really low. These two right here are the lowest. So you can hear, check this out, this is really cool. When I raise the pitch of this one, 
Not only is it going to raise this, it's also going to raise the one across from it as well. Check it out. Raise the pitch just slightly there. Let's see how it is relative to the other ones. So I'm hearing this one a little low. Drums are weird, man. Trying to get them as even as possible. It's kind of a little game. So by raising this one, I also, I also raise the pitch of these, so they're a little closer to everything now too. It's a little kind of a game you gotta play. Two more. Feels pretty good. Pretty close now. This one's still really low. I'm gonna give that more low. Okay, now I have them all relatively the same. Let's check. So this one, this one, and this one are all still slightly low. I'm gonna give this one last little love touch. And I think that'll be pretty good for a, for a starting point. Relatively close. You're never going to get them exact, so don't don't play that game. If you're chasing the dragon at that point. You're going to be there forever. So figure out a good point to call it. Be satisfied and move on. How are we doing on time here? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the time here. Oh, boom! Right on schedule. Cool. Let's keep moving in. So remember, logo, badge. So while I'm doing this, um, I just thought of something. If you want to know kind of an interesting secret, is that, you know, this is a pretty nice drum. Pretty nice drum set. It's the nicest drum set I've ever owned. It's about as expensive as my car. <laughs> um, <laughs> which shows you how much I care about drums. Uh, but, uh, you know, in reality, if you know how to tune well, just like if you know how to take care of a car, you can get by with something that's a little bit cheaper. You can get by with something that's a little bit cheaper. Um, you know, even uh, you no, know, if you know how to tune, you can make a five hundred dollar Pearl Export drum set sound amazing if you know what you're doing. If you got good heads, and you know what you're doing as far as tuning goes, then that's that's a huge part of the battle. I mean, nice drums help. No, I'm not going to lie, you know, but you, you can definitely, if you know how to tune and you know how to play, you can get by with a $500 drum set, no problem. Definitely not the end of the world. It's all in the tuning and the playing. But, you know, the nicer the drum, the, you know, the sturdier and, and, and potentially better it could sound. But I don't think it's a majority percentage of the sound. I think that has a lot to do with head choice, tuning, and your playing style. You know, um, as most of you know, I'll often tell you to play through the drum. You know, pretend that you're playing to a surface about here. Pretend the drum head is stopping you. It's getting in your way. The reason I do this is so that you, you're, you're really getting the full sound out of the, out of the heads and out of the drum. If you play to the drum head, your playing can tend to get a little feathery and a little light. And you, can, you can tend to kind of not let the, the drums reach their full potential as far as tone, sound, and texture. So the way you play and the way you tune is very important. Way more important than the kind of drum set you play. If you play an electric drum set, it's a little tougher because, you know, it, it, it's only going to respond so many ways because it's electric. But, you know, it gets the job done. And Kylie, I know you're used to playing on the acoustic drum set, so you kind of have the experience there that you need. And everyone else in the chat has an acoustic drum set, so, you know, pay attention to how hard you're hitting. Make sure you're hitting hard enough and, and the drum is realizing its full potential. Cool. I've got these all about finger tight. Finger tight. Uh, so now I'm going to go through, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the other one. I'm going to do just a... Uh, Honestly, I might even do less than a half turn. I'll do like a quarter turn. Let's see here. Oof. All right, so let's do... All right, so loose. We're loose. Going until... Making sure the hoops on good here. Okay. Making sure 
go until we seize up, until the hoop start, hits the hoop and starts fighting back. And then I'm just going to do a little, uh, little quarter turn there. Nothing crazy. Same thing over here. Fights back. Quarter turn. Skip a lug. Boom. Quarter turn. Across. Quarter turn. And then jump over one. Got to get the other four. Boom. Fights back. Quarter turn. Boom. Fights back. Quarter turn. Skip a lug. Boom. Fights back. Quarter turn. Boom. I think I skipped one wrong. Oh yeah, this one. Here we go. Boom. Yeah, sometimes if you get lost, which I get lost all the time, uh, just, you know, find your loose one and that's the one you missed. No one's perfect. Cool. Um, okay, let's see where we're at. Wow. That sounds pretty good. Um, I'm getting a nice... Nice bass response, sounds huge. Um, however, you will notice that there is a little bit of wrinkle in the head. You can see it right there with the light. That means that the head is uh, not tightened super evenly um, or not tight enough at all. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna double check all these. And so something that's kind of interesting is what, what can happen, especially with these die cast hoops, is, you know, let's say, I think I started on this one, actually, and it's loose now. So what happens is you'll tighten this one, and then you'll, you'll go around, and kind of the hoop will get pulled down with all the other ones. And then this one, which once was tight, now it has become loose. So sometimes when you go for your first round of tightening, you got to go back and check, because sometimes, especially with these less flexible die cast hoops that this drum set has, you're going to see a little bit of that. And I think that explains the wrinkles on this side of the drum. So I'm going to go around. I'm just going to double check, make sure I'm getting my quarter turn. The wrinkles went away. Let's double check. This one's loose too. It's going to happen with these die cast hoops on occasion. Always got to just double check. This one feels pretty good. This one's good. This one's good. Yeah, I just tune a lot by feel. You know, I try to get too bogged down with being exact. This one's a little loose too, yeah. But I started with some of these, and as I got the rest of the drum, it kind of loosened those as well because of the hoop being pulled the other way. So like I said, just double check, fix it, you're good to go. I think that might have taken care of uh, some of our issues. Okay, so sounding pretty good. I'm getting a little bit of a weird kind of growly noise. So let me, what that can be from usually is the, it can either be there's some wrinkles in the top head still that I'm not noticing, which I think might be the case, or sometimes if the top head is too low relative to the bottom head, um, you can kind of get this, this weird kind of rattly um, party noise. So it's kind of, uh, you gotta do a little investigating. Um, I have a feeling that I just think this top head is still a little too loose. Um, so let me go around and check my pitches. So in general, this side of the drum is still a little bit higher. So I'm gonna go over. Yeah, this one was still loose for some reason. These die cast hoops can be tricky because they're not very flexible. One solid piece of metal, it's not very flexible. The cheaper hoops are three pieces of metal fused together and thinner, a little more flexible. There we go. There we go. Yep, no more weird farty noise. Oh. Um. Now that I'm hearing it, it sounds pretty good. I think I might have gone a little too tight on the bottom head. Um, so let me check our time and see how we're doing there. Okay, I got plenty of time still. So I think I might have gone a little too tight on the bottom head. Um, and so this is where I'd say, you know, that would work. 
Um, but I'm gonna say maybe I'll experiment and I'll try lowering this bottom edge to see what kind of result I can get. Um, I'm pretty happy with I'm pretty happy with where this top head is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double check the pitches over here and then leave it alone. Be very subtle. No major adjustments. Make a little adjustment and then check what it's done to your sound. Of this top head. Like I said, I'm going to experiment here. Let me check where my pitches are at. So let's see. just a little bit lower. Um, now that I'm, I'm hearing that, I think I'm going to go ahead and just lower the bottom head and see what happens. A little bit of experimenting here. Kind of decreasing the distance between the pitches. So there's, this, there's this gap in pitches. The top head is a little bit lower in pitch than the bottom head. I'm going to go ahead and bring the bottom head closer to the pitch of the top head. Not exactly and not lower than the, not lower than the uh, top head. But I'm just going to see what happens if I lower it a little bit. Just a little bit of experimentation here. I think I might have gone a little too tight on it now that I'm hearing it. So what you want to do, whenever you're going down, remember that you want to loosen, and then you want to go back up just a little bit, just to reset the tension rod on the, the little thing that it's sitting on. Get it nice and snug so it's not going to move around. A little trick I learned from building drums. Check it out. Um, so let's go, let's see, how much of an adjustment, let's go, let's just do a little eight, little eighth of a turn, nothing crazy, I'm going to do that on all of them, a little eighth of a turn, come back up, a little eighth of a turn, come back up, a little eighth of a turn, come back up, over one, eighth of a turn, come back up one, across, down an eighth of a turn, up a little bit, across, down an eighth of a turn, up a little bit, across, down an eighth of a turn, up a little bit. This one, this one's getting a little loose, so I'm gonna go. This one's like almost completely loose. So once again, due to that die cast tube being tightened down, not very flexible, it's gonna it's kind of a tricky game you gotta play. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go reset that one in a quarter and leave it there. My pitches are all still relatively similar. Let's see what that did to my overall sound. Slight adjustment, test your sound. So I think I like what that did to my bass response. The heads are vibrating uh, in a way that satisfies me a little more. Kind of this weird like basketball-y sound that I'm hearing. Um, and to get rid of that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'm going to also bring the bottom head down as well. Or the, um, my apologies, the batter head as well. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this one down with those little slight adjustments, just like I did the other head. You know, sometimes you'll overshoot it and you'll get a sound you like, but if you think you can get a better sound, if there's something else you're looking for, experiment and go for it. It's okay to, you know, mess around with it. That's how you find what you like. So that is definitely closer to what I'm looking for. I'm getting a little bit of rattliness. I think one of the lugs might be a little too loose. And here's a, okay, here's a cool thing. So I like my overall tone. I'm getting a little bit of that rattliness. So I know one of my tension rods is loose. The way you can check for that, press in the middle of the head, and you're gonna be able to see. Check it out. Watch for the watch for the wrinkles. I don't know if you can see them. 
that they appeared, the wrinkles appeared on this side. So that means this side is a little looser. Yeah, I'll double check now. I'm only seeing wrinkles on kind of this area over here. So I know my, that's where my culprit might be at. And if you check, these two are a little low. Let's bring them up. That one was really low. So we're getting a little of that rattliness. Let me check again. Yeah, it's still a little loose over there. Weird. Okay. That one's pretty good. There we go. Yep. And that's, uh, that's how I get my floor tom sound. Boom. Uh, we got time. Let's open it up for some questions. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. So, uh, any, um, does anybody have anything that they found relatively interesting about that? Or, uh, you know, uh, Anything uh, you're excited about, the fact that you learned? Um, any personal experiences with uh, tuning the floor tom or tuning any other drums that you'd like to share with everyone? I mean, don't really have tuning experiences, but. Right, right, right. Um, but you know, uh, I mean, do you like the way that the, the floor tom at Strum sounds? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, so that's that kind of tuning right there. Um, and a lot of times when you're on your electric kit, that stock sound, the one that comes with it, is oftentimes sampled after that sort of tuning. It's They're not going to give you a, a jazz tuning with your uh, electric drum set. The low kind of rock fat tuning is, is much more common um, and much more widely used. What I use. Um, Sounds great recorded as well under a microphone. Um, good stuff. Xander, do you have any questions? No. All good? Cool, dude. Uh, Sinjin, anything you found interesting? Any questions? Nothing? Cool. Very good. That means I did my job. Uh, let me think if there's any last things and then we'll be done. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Uh, we're good. Cool. Thanks for coming. Um, I will see all of you next week to work on your showcase solos. That's going to be really cool. Everybody's going to have their own personalized solo. It's going to be really sick. I'm really excited to write those for you guys. It's going to be a good time. Um, in the meantime, have fun practicing. Practice every day. Uh, and have a good weekend. I'll see you guys. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Later.